The Washington Commanders dip back into the Carolina Commanders pool once again. A full round pick, Brian Robinson Jr. And as well, a former Redskin heading to Carolina, just to make that connection a little bit deeper. That's all coming up next, plus HTTC, baby, on the Locked On Commanders podcast. Our Locked On Commanders, your daily podcast on the Washington Commanders. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey there, everybody. I'm Chris Russell. Good to have you with us right here on the Locked On Commanders podcast. Uh, Flying solo on this particular edition, my partner David Harrison, who covers the Commanders for Sports Illustrated's Fan Nation, is out for this particular show. He'll be back with a solo episode coming up the next time around. You can listen to me normally on the Russell and Medhurst show Monday through Friday from three to seven when we're actually paired together with Pete Medhurst or anytime like you can the Locked On Commanders podcast on the Odyssey app. Locked On Commanders is free and available on all platforms, including now on YouTube. So if you're watching, we thank you and Either way, we thank you. If we're uh, if you're on Twitter, you can hit us up at dharrison82 at russellmania621 and at locked uh, at lo commander at lo commanders. Once again, we thank you for making the Locked On Commanders podcast your first listen and watch of the day. And we're presented by Blue Nile. This Mother's Day, give mom something she'll treasure forever with fine jewelry. From Blue.com and Locked On Sports listeners get $50 off of a $500 or more purchase. Use the code Locked On at checkout. All right, guys, we start with this. Right after David and I wrapped up recording on the last episode, we found out the Washington Commanders hitting free agency phase number two with a little bit of abandon and bringing in a familiar face. But not to you, not to the Washington commander or Washington NFL fan. Nope. A familiar face to Ron Rivera, John Matzkow, and the coaching staff and the front office in large part of the Washington commanders. Another former Carolina Panther joining what I'm going to just start dubbing them as the Carolina commanders. Sure. That's a little bit in jest, but I mean, let's be honest. It's not a bad thing. It's just a lot. It's a lot of connections. It's a lot of old, familiar, friendly faces. And sometimes that can be a good thing. Sometimes that could be a not so good thing. Now, Trey, uh, not the shortstop who the Washington Nationals traded to the Los Angeles Dodgers at last year's baseball trade deadline. Nope. This is T R I, I'm sorry, T R A I, T R A I, Trey Turner. Free agent offensive guard, last with the Pittsburgh Steelers, also played with the Chargers in between his time between the Carolina Panthers and now his former head coach uh, in Carolina and now with the Washington Commanders and, of course, his former offensive line coach uh, and assistant coach John Matzkow. So uh, who is Trey Turner? Well, I think you guys are going to like this addition. Ultimately, overall, he's reliable. Right, played 1,082 snaps last year. 1,082. Did allow seven sacks. So that is a little bit of a, according to PFF, the way they judge it, that heard in the NFL among guards. Six penalties. That's tied for 19. An overall grade of 69.4 uh, for 2021 out of 100. A pass blocking grade of 72.7 out of 100. A run blocking grade, 67.6. He played all 1,082 of his snaps at right guard. 702 in pass blocking, 380 in run blocking, and he allowed total of 20 pressures and, again, those seven sacks. Now, those numbers probably don't blow your skirt up or anything like that, and that's okay. What you need to know about Trey Turner is 
he's a guy that, again, Rivera and Maskell know how he works, how he is in the meeting room, how he operates, what kind of teammate he is. They know that they can count on him to be part of the mix at right guard. I don't think anybody should be looking at this as, oh, he is definitely Brandon Sheriff's replacement. He is definitely the starter at right guard. Just because he was in Pittsburgh last year doesn't mean he definitely will be this year. It's likely that he will, especially being that it doesn't look like they're going to slide Sam Cosme from right tackle over to right guard, which I think they would have if one of the big left tackles uh, would have fallen in the first round of the draft. So it looks like Trey Turner is going to be in a competition with guys like Wes Schweitzer, Sadiq Charles, uh, that t- Tyler Larson, that type of situation, and let the best man win. Now, could that likely be Trey Turner? Of course, absolutely. Just like When Charles Leno was picked up after the draft last year, after he was cut by the Chicago Bears in the days right after, and I think it was like maybe four or five days after the draft, Charles Leno was signed, and he wound up starting every single game at left tackle. Now, that's a little bit different because they didn't per se have a bona fide option, uh, although they kind of did. They kind of did with Cornelius Lucas, who had started a bunch of games the previous year. But Cornelius Lucas also was dealing with all sorts of COVID issues uh, and really, again, more of a right tackle than a left tackle. So Leno kind of slid right in there. Uh, And Trey Turner probably, again, probably, when you get to veteran OTAs and veteran minicamp on the first day of training camp, will probably be the starting right guard. Again, the numbers aren't tremendous. They're not knock your socks off type uh, of great. Uh, He was with the Chargers in 2020, only played 536 snaps. I think he was a little bit banged up, uh, if memory serves me correct, uh, in that uh, smaller sample size. And in that smaller sample size, about roughly half of what he played last year, he only allowed one sack in Los Angeles, okay? But you look at some of his other numbers throughout his career, and In 2017, again, with Rivera Matsko, 844 snaps, zero sacks allowed, and only four total hits, 22 hurries, 26 total combined pressures, according to PFF. But you see a track record of a guy who is solid, who is above average, who is on the generous side, good, maybe not great, Maybe not as good as Brandon Sheriff, but way, way, way less in terms of the financials. It's a reported one-year, $3 million deal. We don't know if that's $3 million in base or an incentive structure. We're not sure yet. But when you combine the fact that they let go of Eric Flowers, who's going to cost them, I think, around $10 million or so, and Brandon Sheriff, who was going to cost them... You know, who knows? I mean, just using the franchise tag over the last two years, uh, 33 million over two years and 18 million last year. So, you know, whatever the numbers ultimately would have been on our new contract, it wouldn't have been that high, but a significant amount. So we're talking about probably you know, roughly $20 million worth of cap space for those two players. You're talking about Andrew Norwell and Trey Turner, just using them as an example. And you got two starters that Ron and John are very familiar with, that are veterans in this league, that have had a productive history, are above average to good, depending on the game, depending on the snap. But they're probably costing Washington five or six million dollars in cap space, as opposed to roughly 18 to 21, if you would have Eric Flowers, and if you would have kept Brandon Sheriff, which I didn't think they were ever going Going to do anyway, but the bottom line is, is the combination of Trey Turner and Andrew Norwell compared to Eric Flowers and Brandon Sheriff, while it may not be as good as those two guys were combined, it is a lot cheaper. It is a lot more affordable, which then, of course, allows you to spend in other areas. And that's the real intriguing part, because right now we are in round two of free agency. And round two, As of Monday at 4 o'clock, teams no longer get charged as part of the compensatory pick formula for free agents that they sign. 
right now, Washington's going to get a third round compensatory pick for Brandon Share for losing him in free agency to the Jacksonville Jaguars. Well, they didn't offset that because they really haven't signed anybody in the Campanula window um, that cost really anything. And again, Trey Turner didn't cost a whole lot, but anything that would have chipped away could potentially offset that third round compensatory pick formula. So it was important to note when the signing, when the agreement actually happened. And I asked Ron Rivera about this on Saturday night as we wrapped up the draft, not specifically the compensatory pick formula, but if they were going to be really active in the post draft phase of free agency. And basically he said, hell yeah. And they should, they should, they should be involved because they have saved a little bit of money. They'll get more money from Landon Collins savings in uh, on June 1st, not now, but they'll get more money then. So they can spend a little bit more money now. Uh, they've already counted in their books, the draft class. So they'll be able to pick maybe one, perhaps two other veterans in this group to add to their roster. They got plenty of roster space. They signed plenty of undrafted free agents. They'll be able to bring all of these guys in to formulate that 90 man roster so that you have depth, so that you have uh, coverage for injuries, so that you have veteran and cheaper uh, younger options, but the veterans aren't making all bloated salaries. That's how this works. And they're still going to be preserving as many of their draft picks next year. Because remember, the Carson Wentz deal goes from either a third round pick to a second round pick, depending on what incentives and play counts he actually meets. So Trey Turner, the new guard for the Washington commander, another former Carolina Panther added to the mix. Coming up next on the Locked On Commanders podcast, an in-depth look at Brian Rock Jr., the running back, number 98 overall, the third round pick out of the University of Alabama. We'll examine him under the spotlight coming up on the Locked On Commanders podcast. All right, but guys, first, it's Chris Russell here for our friends at BlueNile.com. That's right. Celebrate life's special moments with fine jewelry. If you're looking for fine jewelry but having trouble choosing, Blue Nile has jewelry experts on hand 24-7, and they're available by a phone or chat to help you find a memorable gift at every budget for the special mom in your life, the special lady in your life, Whoever it might be, mark Mother's Day with something enduring. How about a classic diamond stud earring set? How about elegant tennis bracelets, birthstone pendants, and so much more available for you at BlueNile.com. Again, if you're celebrating the special woman in your life, you're going to make her happy. You're going to take her breath away, right? Uh and you're going to make her happy and fall in love with you if it's your significant other or if it's your mom, she's going to think, man, she has the best son in the whole wide world. We're going to give you so many different uh, fine jewelry options at BlueNile.com. You won't even really exactly know how to eliminate some. So maybe you get a couple of different pieces, right? Get one for your mom, get one for your wife. And here's the deal, guys. This Mother's Day, when you go to BlueNile.com and go there before, you're going to save. $50 off of a $500 purchase for Locked On Washington Commanders listeners. That's right. The podcast exclusive is only good through Mother's Day. Use the code Locked On. That's code Locked On to save $50 off of a $500 purchase. Every order is insured, ships free, arrives in discreet packaging, so it won't give away what's inside. Drop stress free and find your forever peace and make mom or the woman in your life happy at BlueNile.com today. All right, guys, thanks for making the Locked On Commanders podcast your first listen and your first watch each and every day. All right, Brian Robinson Jr. became the commander's third round pick out of the University of Alabama at number 98 overall. Remember, it's the third round pick that they reacquired after trading it to Carson Wentz. 
uh, and it was an earlier pick. Then they acquired this pick as part of the New Orleans Saints trade from number 11. You know how that worked. That also landed up an extra fourth round pick, which Washington used, created one back to get two fifth round picks and so on and so forth. All right, so Brian Robinson Jr., the Alabama running back, a physical thumper, but not a physical thumper in the classic sense of slow feet, not able to break tackles, not able to make a move in the open field. If you watch Brian Robinson Jr. tape, you know that he can run hard and run downhill and run with physicality, but you also know that he can make somebody miss. You also know that he has some elusivity. Is he going to be a guy that's going to outrace everybody? Of course not. Is he going to be a guy that takes a wide, wide zone path all the way to the outside, uh, to the sideline and turns it up and just, again, runs away everybody and leaves every? No, that's not what he is. But what he is is a guy between the tackles, especially an off tackle that can blow you away with physicality, speed, and his vision. All right, so here's the thing. Uh, I wanted to read this as a setup to a little bit more of an in-depth look at Brian Robinson. This is from um, Matt Miller, who is with ESPN, draft analyst. Uh, and basically he said, it's tough to pick on a team after it just made a dream come true for draft prospects, but the commander's value in this draft didn't match up with the board. They traded back for Jahan Dotson, number 16, instead of selecting Chris Olave or Jamison Williams in round one, a big head scratcher, okay? The same can be said for their back-to-back -back Alabama selections of defensive tackle Fedarian Mathis, number 47, who David and I uh, profiled and took a deep dive on on the last episode, and Ryan back running back Brian Robinson Jr., again at number 98. Here's what Miller said. Both are good players, but the value at their respective spots was off by at least a full round. There was more. They also, in part of this, called the commanders clueless, said Robinson, uh, and this wasn't Matt Miller. This was uh, the uh, this was somebody else from Roto. Ed. They said basically Robinson could be a valuable end of the bench fantasy selection who would see a decent workload if Gibson struggles with injuries this year. And they're talking basically about how Robinson is going to eat into Antonio Gibson's workload. Well, yes. That's the point. He's going to preserve Antonio Gibson. He's going to take away the load that has been sitting on Antonio Gibson for the first two years in the NFL while he's dealt with a painful toe injury down the stretch in 2020 and all sorts of nagging lower leg injuries in 2021 that he dealt with during the middle of the year. Antonio Gibson's also got fumbling issues. Antonio Gibson, as I've mentioned a couple of times, the Washington Commanders, whether by choice, whether it's by design, whether it's by Antonio Gibson reading a thing the right way and it's impossible to know, likes to run downhill in between the tackles, where the most physicality is, where the most bodies are. And that has taken its toll already. So I don't really care about the fantasy angle of this. I don't care. You'll figure it out. Antonio Gibson is going to be a better running back and a better player for the Washington Commanders when he's not asked to run downhill and asked to carry the load against so much trash, if you will, around his knees and around his ankles and around his shins and around his lower body in general. And he's going to be able, theoretically, to preserve the football a little bit better because he's going to have less of a workload. He's going to have less arms reaching and grabbing and poking. Teams know this. It's on film. They know he struggles in this area. So you can preserve Antonio Gibson in terms of fumbling and in terms of the wear and tear on his body by using Brian Robinson in a role that he's more than comfortable with, more than familiar with. And again, he racks up a ton of run after the uh, catch uh, or run after contact, I should say, yards. Uh, as a matter of fact, 891 last year. That was tied for 12th in the country. And that was really his first breakout, breakout season in which he had 271 carries compared to less than 100 in each of his first two years. So he doesn't have a ton of uh, wear and tear on him. 
again, almost 1,350 yards last year, an 85.9 grade overall from pro football focus. Receiving yards, this is something that I think is a little sneaky about Brian Robinson, and maybe it was the scheme at Alabama and not what he's going to be asked to do certainly here, at least for now, is he had 35 catches on just 38 targets and 296 yards. Now, again, that doesn't mean he's never going to catch a ball. Of course he could, but that's not going to be his role. That he isn't even going to be close to his primary role. It's going to be taking something off of Antonio Gibson, making Antonio Gibson better, preserving Antonio Gibson, and also giving teams a physical load that while I can't say that they're not used to from Washington. What they're not used to is Brian Robinson being able to hurt them in that respect with Antonio Gibson split out as a wide receiver or split out in the slot or in a different sort of way than they have been able to use Antonio Gibson. So Brian Robinson's addition is, brings not only a different talent base or a different set of talent to the Washington Commanders backfield, but it also tremendously helps out Antonio. Tremendously helps out Antonio. He missed or forced 79 missed tackles. So some of those tough physical five to seven type yard runs are going to turn into 10 to 12 yard runs. He's more of a zone runner than he is a runner. So that is something that's going to have to be taken into account. We're going to see how Scott Turner and the rest of the offensive staff kind of lines that up. 22 carries of 15 plus yards or more. That was tied for the 10th in the cut. Now, playing beyond a great offensive line at Alabama. But again, make no mistake about it. Brian Robinson is not just a bulldozer. He is not just a guy that's going to run you over and not be able to break a tackle, not be able to get into space. Brian Robinson, I think, is going to be a good pick for the Washington Commanders, and I think he's going to help out in ways that you probably don't realize. David's pick... For this, uh, David's grade, I should say, for this particular pick is a B-plus for Brian Robinson. I guarantee you nobody else is going to give Brian Robinson a B-plus except for David and me. I'm going B-plus as well. I really like this pick. Maybe I'm a little bit bullish. Maybe David's a little bit bullish. But we cover this team. We see what this team needs. We know the wear and tear on Antonio Gibson. We don't care about the fantasy impact right now. We don't care about rankings and projections and where you thought he was. It's scheme fit. It's personnel fit. It's where he fits and what they're looking for. Don't forget, they lost Peyton Barber at the beginning of last year. They didn't have that short yardage physical back. Don't forget, around the goal line where it's often a car accident. That's where Brian Anderson, uh, Brian Robinson can help you. Brian Anderson, he's a basketball and baseball announcer, Brian Robinson can help you most, or one of the areas where he can help you the most. So uh, both David and I are going with B pluses for the particular pick. All right, guys, summer is coming. And with summer, you're going to need to have some good, healthy food on the go, right? Built Bars are the perfect snack to take with you on your family vacation. Throw them in your bags and your kid's backpack. Make sure everyone has a bar so you're fueled for summertime adventures. The best part about Built Bars, they're healthy, they're delicious, they're soft and easy to chew, covered in 100% chocolate, so you want to keep them out of the sun. All Built Bars and Puffs, again, are covered in 100% real chocolate, which means they also taste awesome. That means when you have a Built Bar or the Built Bar Puffs, you can eat healthy and actually enjoy doing it because most of the products are 130 to 140 calories, four or so grams of sugar, net carbs, all of that deal. All the delicious flavors that you could ever ask for. And they're always coming in more and new flavors at built.com. So here's what we want you to do. Go to built.com, use the promo code locked 15 and get 15% off your order by using the promo code locked 15 for 15% off at built.com. All right, wrapping up the Locked On Washington Commanders podcast. I'm Chris Russell. Good to have you with us. So the team announced at the draft party 
We had heard some rumors about this, that they were looking to, and they had a vote or they had some sort of poll of some sort that HTTC, hashtag HTTC, was going to replace hashtag take command as the preferred official Twitter hashtag of the Washington commanders. HTTC sounds a lot like, well, HTTR, which was part of the reasoning Jason Wright gave when they switched over the team name. Uh, and also, apparently, they're still developing a new team song. So HTTC, of course, again, just one letter off of HTTTR, or HTTR, I should say, not TTT, HTTR. So there's some uh, similarity there, some familiarity. I don't mind it. I don't mind it. Here's my question. You spent the last three months building up take command, hashtag take command, and then you had all of your draft picks on Thursday, Friday, and I think even Saturday, although I'm less sure of Saturday, but I know Thursday and Friday do these little videos that you would post on social media and they all said, take command. They all said, take command instead of TTC. Hail to the commanders. How do we not get this right? If you're going to switch the hashtag, if you're going to switch the acronym, if you're going to go from take command, which you've been trying to build for three months, which you forgot that the San Antonio commanders have, why didn't you? why did you have your draft picks, at least again on Thursday and Friday night, do the whole take command bit. Why wouldn't you have them do HTTC, baby? Hail to the commanders. I don't quite get that. Do you? Oh, I don't know if it's a big deal or not. Maybe it's something I just noticed, uh, but people are making a little bit of a deal out of it. Apparently, they want you to use HTTC. And finally, before we bid you adieu, I uh, just want to send a shout out. Usually, it's the Panthers coming to Washington or Buffalo, um, but, and sometimes then they go from Buffalo to Washington. And sometimes they go from Washington, well, then they come back to, Wa anyway, you get my point. Uh, the whole deal is this, Panthers, uh, the Carolina Panthers have signed three-time Pro Bowl kick returner and punt returner Andre Roberts. He agreed to a one-year, $1.75 million deal, $900,000 fully guaranteed uh, at signing, according to uh, a report. Roberts is from Columbia, South Carolina, in his 13th NFL season. He didn't play here long for the Washington then Redskins. I got to know him fairly well, but he was always fun. Uh, military. Really, He played at the Citadel in college football, but... What's interesting is Andre Roberts has bounced around to so many different teams, the Jets, the Bills, uh, the Chargers, I think the Texans, now to the Carolina Panthers. I mean, it's been a while since he played here, but he actually owns a fast food restaurant, Zaxby's, where I live in Chantilly, Virginia, 20 minutes from the team facility, the commander's team facility. So I always thought he would want to try and come back here, especially being that Right now, they don't have a kick returner. This was a little bit surprising that a deal didn't uh, get worked out or that there wasn't maybe more of an emphasis on trying to do something like this because I think Andre Roberts uh, could have helped. All right, that is going to do it for us on this particular edition of the Locked On Commanders podcast. We want to thank you for making LOC your first listen and your first watch of the day. Come back for the next episode. David will be joined by North Carolina offensive coordinator and quarterbacks coach Phil Longo to talk about fifth round pick Sam Howell. Now make your second listen of the day, the Locked On NFL podcast. This gets may be dark, but the NFL never stops, and trust me, it never does. And neither does Locked On NFL gets insights and opinions from hosts, including Ross Jackson, Chris Carter, Tony Wiggins, plus local Locked On NFL hosts repping all 32 squads. There's no offseason for real fans, so you subscribe to Locked On NFL on YouTube and wherever you get your podcast. If you want to hop in, it's Locked On Washington Commanders at gmail.com or 
Be a part of the voicemail experience, 301-615-3577. That's 301-615-3577. That's going to do it for us today. For David Harrison, who's covering the commanders on SI.com's Fan Nation. I'm Chris Russell of the Russell and Medhurst Show on the Team 980 with Pete Medhurst. Uh, thanks for making us your first listen and watch of the day. We are part of the Locked On Network. Your team each and every day will be back right here on the Locked On Commanders Podcast.